everyone. Welcome to Super Mega Cast, episode 71. Uh, it's officially December, which means now you can be jamming out to some of those Christmas tunes or Hanukkah tunes, whichever whichever you want. I don't know, but there's too many prominent Hanukkah songs. Have yeah. you ever heard like a Hanukkah song? Yeah. Um, what was it called? Give Me Your Graces Unto Us. Really? It's a really popular Hanukkah song. Oh my God. I had no idea there was actually Hanukkah yeah. music. I, th- I thought it would sound kind of like, when I think of we Hanukkah are music. Here. Together now, so that Jesus will not be remembered as the Christ, our Savior. <laughs> you don't know that one? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> uh, whenever I think of Hanukkah music, for some reason I think of the Tetris theme, because it just sounds like music that would play at like a Jewish wedding. Hey, uh, what? so uh, you know how this is... This is uh, episode seventy-one. Yeah, here's some here's 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 some fun facts about the number seventy-one. Yeah, dude. Okay, seventy-one squared is five thousand and forty-one. Which that actually will be the finale episode of our podcast. Some might say, "How big is seventy-one? Just how big is seventy-one? How big is it? Seventy-one seconds is equal to one minute and eleven seconds. Whoa! Right? That's three ones. Ready for this one? Yes. The number of decimal digits it has is two. Decimal digits? Yes, mm-hmm. you're right. The sum of 71's digits is eight. Eight! And there's more coming soon, so... <laughs> Does the website say that? <laughs> yeah. Guys, we got more 71 facts coming soon. <laughs> Hang tight. Now, these there won't be 71 facts. It's facts about the number 71. Can it's a business just... me and my son started. Okay, episode 100. We have to go back and check to see if they ever updated <laughs> if they that. they added so, more. All right, guys, we got to see if they added more facts about the number 70. How many <laughs> facts are there about the number 71? I think it was just all math problems. There was nothing, like, big about it. 71 is a deficient number because the sum of its proper divisors, 1, is less than itself. Its deficiency is 70. What? I don't know what that... I, I Come don't on, know man. Math. That's a fun fact. Okay, that is, that is fun. 71 as a number. Wikipedia says... Oh, I forgot they have like a page for every fucking number. Oh, they want me to donate because of... Ugh. Yeah, it's that time of year where Wikipedia like throws like a million boxes in your face that say, please, for the love of Christ, donate. You know, 71 is the natural number following 70 <gasps> and preceding 72. It has its own Wikipedia page? That's what it says on its Wikipedia pra- pra- page. 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 The, the Wikipedia page. Dude, I can't believe that. I- I'm so blessed to be doing the 71st episode of this podcast. For real, man. That's a lot of episodes. I know we always say this. It's like, wow, look at this number and how many episodes it is. 71's, it's a lot that's, of episodes. That's every episode we do that. We didn't do it every on episode. single episode. We did fucking not do it episode. on episode 70. Are you sure? Positive. I just edited that one. We did not do okay. episode. We did not say We like, did it wow. on 69. We definitely did on 69. 68, 67, 66. We probably have done it every single podcast but 70. Which not, is good. Well, no, because on episode one, we weren't like, wow. Can you believe that's that? so many episodes. <laughs> Man, we've made, we've come a long way. Guys, I we've think made like, it to two episodes. That it'll be in my head that we've done a shit ton once we reach 100. Because yeah, I'll be like, digits. holy fuck. How? Because eventually we'll get to 200 if we do this for another so. like year and a half. I, I think we'll hit, uh, I think we will hit 200. Because sometimes I, I, I imagine we'll uh, release every now and then like two podcasts in one week. It happens, yeah. We might do that more in 2018. Who knows? No promises. Be- wink, wink. I don't know. Because we can't keep our promises. We're really bad at keeping promises on YouTube and off YouTube. So, oh, I think off of YouTube I keep my promises uh, about 50% of the time. So. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, sure. That's a good, that's a we, good number. We went and got some sushi yesterday. Yes, we put did. me in a good mood for the rest of the day. That's like, dude, you know, sushi puts you in a good mood, especially good sushi. We didn't have to wait a second. No, because we go to Kula, the place we've suggested before, and usually the wait time's like two hours. We get there, and they're like, have a seat. We're like, <gasps> where they're like, do you want to set the bar? We're like, ooh, the bar, yes. Mm. They actually let us uh, bypass the wait because we're such famous YouTubers. Were you like me continuously making awkward eye contact with the people across the way from us? Yeah, in fact, the guy was, <laughs> he was trying to take a picture of the Rotane Sushi Bar and I kept like smiling. <laughs> Did you really? I, but I was doing this kind of smile like... <laughs> where it's, it's Did more, he notice? I don't, maybe. He took like six. It was more gum than teeth. My favorite smile is when... You show more gum than you show teeth. Your smiles always remind me of just kind of like, like you, it's like a, it's like a snotty kid smile sometimes. Cause you do it. No, no, no. That, that's like. A snotty kid smile. Cause you do the thing where you're just like, you have like, you, you know, like, hey, yeah. I don't know how to, how to explain it. You do this weird smug, but funny, unaware 
like character when you do those smiles. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope that's not actually you, and I'm not like hurting your feelings by saying you're unaware and <laughs> no, Ryan, my feelings inept. aren't hurt at all. <laughs> but, uh, but wait, 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 oh, Ryan. Okay. You know what would redeem this? If maybe you took a moment to thank our wonderful sponsor, MeUndies. Oh yeah! Every year, millions of people receive the least liked gift of all time, underwear. But we still give it to our family and our loved ones who just don't want it. But maybe it's not that the underwear is the problem, it's the kind of underwear. <gasps> so let us tell you about MeUndies, the only underwear that makes for an amazing gift. Okay, first of all, they have a very soft and flexible waistband that's good for fat people like me. And it's three times softer than cotton. Three times! It's natural, sustainably sourced... It has natural, sustain... It's natural, sustainably sourced... Uh, why is there... Uh, uh, hold on. Okay, fix my voice box, folks. It's natural and sustainably sourced fiber. That's what's included in the underwear, you know, just natural sustainable. You could say that whole thing again, Ryan. MeUndies made underwear the perfect gift that everyone is going to love you for. Your mom, your dad, your grandma, they're all gonna love you for it. It's a gosh darn holiday miracle. This year, don't give underwear, give MeUndies. It's, well, it's technically underwear, but it's like, Nice underwear, so it's not like you're just giving underwear. It's like, don't give your family a hot tub, give them a jacuzzi, that type yeah, of Yeah, exactly, thing. exactly. This holiday season, to get your exclusive 20% off the softest underwear and socks you will ever wear, free shipping and 100% satisfaction guaranteed, go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. That's MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Thanks for saying it a second time, Matt. Of course, buddy. Remember, type it in the URL. Thanks, guys. Back to the podcast. Here we go. I don't know how we come back in here. So Ryan, yeah. Tell me what what is your favorite chocolate? Holidays are upon us. That's a great time to eat chocolate. What's your favorite brand of chocolate? My favorite chocolate to eat are the Dove milk chocolate squares with caramel inside of them. Oh, damn, dude, you cannot go wrong with those. Dove the, chocolate's amazing. Cuz that's like the higher quality of the uh what's that shitty chocolate? That we all ate in Hershey's school because they world's finest world's finest, which actually is not the world's finest chocolate. Believe it or no, not, no, it's not. I'd say like the Dove caramel filled squares are like it's it's like oh wow, what if this was good? And that's that's what that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, dude, world's finest. I remember I had to sell that for school. Like world's finest chocolate. Oh shit, dude, was by far not the world's finest. It wasn't bad though. It was not the world's worst chocolate. Can I add in another chocolate? Just Throw one it in, more, dude. Ritter Sport. Yes. The one with the butter cracker. With the cracker thing yeah. inside. Yep. Boom. I mean, it's a bit sweet. I would like to have maybe some wine with it. I think it would go perfect with wine. Wine and like, chocolate? Like, like a nice, uh, I don't like red wine, but I couldn't picture drinking a dessert wine with such a sweet chocolate as Ritter Sport. Sound like, like a girl on her, like, that just got broken up with. Like <laughs> wine and chocolate, I well, needed. Dude, it, like... Wine goes well with dessert. Wine, wine does go well with dessert. Wine goes well. With, I love uh, wine. I'm drinking wine right now. Had a whole bottle this morning for breakfast. We were talking about our drink of choice. What is your drink of choice? Uh, I like gin and tonic. When I say we were talking about, I mean like not in the podcast. Not like I just randomly like in my head was like. So we were talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. What last night we were talking about like a drink of choice. You said yours was. I like gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. With a lime. When, a you, lime. When, you, when I go to a bar, it's like my go-to is a gin and tonic. Yeah, gin, just like gin and tonic is good. Like, your go-to is the first thing you order without a thought. You're just yeah. like, I'll have this as I browse what else they have. Exactly. It's like a good starter drink. Yeah. Mine is a rum and Coke. Ooh. Just because I just got used to it when I was in college. Yeah. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of those drinks. No. How about a how about a, a, a Coke and tonic? What? That sounds weird. That sounds disgusting. That sounds awful. Like, actually. anything, like, mixing, tonic is really gross by itself. I don't know if you ever had just straight tonic. Like, tonic water? Tonic water, yeah. It's gross. It's, like, bitter and... And not, I don't even, what is it? Water. That's, that's been tonic. tasted? I, it's, I don't it's know. It's tonic water. Tonic with the ED. What does tonic even mean? Tonic, I like tonic. I don't know, bubbly? I don't fucking know. Because it, no, because it, it's not, it has like a taste. I'm, well, I'm going to look not, it up now like because you bring soda. up these, th I, I, you know, club soda. Why are you making like, me do homework, man? I, I just want to know. I want to get to the bottom of what I'm drinking. Then why don't you look it up? I, I didn't tell you to look it up. Yeah, but you begged this question and then every, we don't know. Because I was that asking maybe me. if you knew what A tonic medical was. substance taken to give a feeling of vigor or well-being? Really? Short for tonic water. Okay. So is it just like it's trying to be like, I'm oh, medicine water. Okay, I guess it, it makes you feel good. I'm going to ask, what is tonic, not tonic, 
Atom atomic water. <laughs> atomic water. <laughs> Tonic water. Tonic water is a carbonated soft drink in which okay. uh, quinine. Quinine. That's what it is. is that's dissolved. the nasty tasting stuff. Originally used as a prophylactic. Prophylactic. That sounds like a medical condition. Against uh, malaria. Okay. Tonic water usually now has a significantly lower quinine content and is consumed for its distinctive bitter flavor. I re okay. When I was thinking of tonic, for some reason I was thinking it makes me think of mosquitoes and I don't know why, but I thought if I said that. You'd be like, what? Why does it make you think of mosquitoes? And then I'd feel <clears throat> stupid. But it's connected to malaria, so somewhere down the road, I was like, oh, quinine, that's for malaria, and that stuck with me. Look at that. Quinine is fucking gross, though. So, in Far Cry 2, all you would have had to do is drink some tonic water. Yeah, just drink some tonic water, man. Tonic water is, I, I, it's, it's only good with gin, I think, or any alcohol, because otherwise it's like, why, why would anyone want to drink this? You Except make, for malaria. You make that classic mistake at soda fountain machines, which I have to bring up a gripe about soda fountain machines, and it's pissing me off. Bring Remind me. Up, Anyways, so uh, you, know, you, you just go for some water. You get a cup full of water. You classic. go take a sip. What is it? It's not water, but it is. It's fucking club soda. Yeah. Coming out of the thing. Who drinks that with their meal? I don't know. It's gross, dude. Like, like someone's just like, I can't enjoy soda, so I have to enjoy the bubbly some other way. It's just like Dobby the house elf <laughs> is enjoying it. It's literally just like soda with no flavor. It's yeah. like, ah, oh, man, I love this completely boring, flavorless soda. Boy, I would love a carbonated flat beverage. <laughs> like LaCroix is not bad because it's got a little bit of flavor. But overall, like I'm not a big fan of sparkling water because I want it when I take a sip, I want it to be something more. It's like a bad hand job. Like you yeah. want it to be like a sweet soda, but it it's not. It's just not a sweet soda. It just tastes like water. I'd rather just have straight water because it's smooth. The bubbles are teasing my mouth and they're being like, hmm, you know, you could be drinking a sweet Sprite or a Coca-Cola, but nope, you got this flavorless shit. At least give it a hint of a flavor, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like you just know, like straight LaCroix up. like does. Yeah, like straight up like San Pellegrino uh, or like, um, I forgot the other popular brand. Oh, no. it's, it's not good. I'm sorry. If you drink it, you're stupid. And that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Cold hard fact you can look up. You've heard it here first, folks. The facts. Super mega cast. Um, so soda machines. Yeah. I am starting to despise their inclusion in, at the movie theaters and at like places, let's say, for instance, like Moe's, the Southwest Grill, but other places yeah. like Chipotle and stuff like that. Not any soda machines. Mm, I know what you're talking about. The all-in-one soda machines. The big red box. Where nothing tastes like what it's supposed to taste like. Because you got every flavor that people have previously gotten, like, mixed with it. It always have the has the aftertaste of Fruit Loops. Every fucking time. <laughs> yeah. It does, like, I get Coke. It's not Coke. I get Sprite. It's not Sprite. Any, Fanta, not Fanta. It, nothing tastes like it's supposed to. Out of any, like, I, I see them and I'm like, boy, I could use a real nice Coke with this salty popcorn. You know, that sweet... Yeah, just Coke going it's, it's down like your a good, rich fucking flavor. throat. You don't want fruity with popcorn. You want a nice savory Coke. But I go and you know, you, is, you just go and get a Coke from one of these machines. You take a sip after all that salty popcorn. What does it taste like? Fucking Fruit Loops or just a con con like just some shitty. What's that? What's that thing that people mix like all the different um uh, drinks? They go <laughs> down the line. Uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. It's not Power Hour. It's a um, suicide? Fuck, no, I know what it's called, dude. I knew this, because I worked at a fast food restaurant where you'd get all, and that's gross, by the way. If you do that, that's pretty gross, in my opinion. Feel free to do it. I, I don't like gross. it, no. Like mixing, I don't, there's some drinks that shouldn't go together, like Sprite, and, uh... We're like, letting these soda machines get off the hook here. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, you know what Coke tastes like from one of those machines? It tastes like I poured a bowl of Fruit Loops, and instead of milk, I used Coke, and then... You took the Fruit Loops out. Yeah, and then I drank the Coke from that. Yes. That's a perfect representation. Which honestly wouldn't be that bad if that's what I was in the mood for. If I was in the mood for some kind of fruity Coke, that might be good. But if I want just a nice, clean, rich Coke, no. It's not what I want. Like, but, but people, they'd rather have the... I, I have a feeling people, like, most people don't care. In the comments, give us your opinions of these stupid machines. Like... My go-to with those machines is lime Fanta. I love lime, and I like Fanta. And it's fruity, and it, it's fruity. fruity. Yeah, <laughs> it's fruity. It's fruity. And I don't, like, I actually gave up for that reason, going for colas from those machines, because they don't taste good. So I'm like, I might as well 
get a fruit beverage so I don't have to deal with that taste. I just stick to my Coke Ices. Dude, Coke Ices at the movie theater? Mm. Coke Ices are pretty good. That's good shit. That is really good shit. That's like my, uh, whenever I go see a movie, if I have the calories now, I try to just get like a small popcorn and a Coke Icy. But at the Arclight, I'll have some wine and some popcorn. Mm. And, you, and you, you take the popcorn and you pour the wine over the popcorn. Oh, get it yeah. All soggy, you just drizzle it, it on yeah. there. Well, actually, I prefer to kind of just throw pieces of popcorn in my wine and let the soft just <laughs> kernels go down my throat. I'm imagining like you put some popcorn in and, it, and the popcorn absorbs the wine and gets like really fat and mushy and then just like. And then, oh. oh, God, just imagine like a cup filled with that. So it's just like drinking a sludge <laughs> of popcorn drenched in wine. But there's still going to be the little like uh, hard, sharp bits of like the kernels. Yeah. That's, like it's stuck in your teeth. That's usually gross. Yeah. Dude, I hate choking on popcorn in a movie theater when like a little piece of a kernel gets in the back of your throat. and You're like, <laughs> never choked on popcorn. You've never choked on popcorn? No, I just I just always get annoyed by the things that get in my teeth. Oh, my God, man. That's incredible. That is a crazy track record. How is that a crazy? I think most people have never choked on popcorn. I think most people have choked on popcorn. Why would you? Why? It's such an easy thing to choke on. Popcorn? It's got the little like flaky kernel parts that will get stuck in your throat. I choke on popcorn at least four times a year. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. It just like, not like, (laughs) but like, it's like, (laughs) I mean, you got to swallow extra hard. I think most of the time I choke, it's due to a drink, not food. Dude, cho- I hate choking, man. Because it's mostly like, just like, it goes down the wrong pipe yeah. or whatever. Cho- choking is the like wrong pipe. the least fun thing that can happen to you while eating. Well, maybe like... What if a guy bursts into a Chipotle as you're eating a burrito and breaks your femur in half? That would be, that'd be a little less fun than choking. Okay. But I, I think choking is... More uh, fun. It, it is... is <laughs> and on the realistic side, the least fun you can have while eating. Realistic? Unless, you're saying like a guy won't break into wherever you're eating. And, and break my femur? And break your femur. Yeah, like that would happen. Like two weeks <laughs> from now, that happens. I hope that never happens. I never want to experience the pain of a broken femur. It's the w- most painful bone to break, right? Because it's so fucking thick. It's like... It's a big bone. Also, like... And that snap. Ow! And you can't, like... Woo! You can't move the rest of your leg without... You know, you're going to feel it in your femur. I'm tensing up thinking about it. Man. You'd have a limp for the rest of your life after breaking your femur, Really? I Fuck, man. I said, I bet. I'm oh, not saying. Like, I'm not a doctor. You know, if gonna, I was, that's what I would say. Dr. McGee, <laughs> you know what's going to happen, Ryan? In the next two weeks, you're going to choke on popcorn, and I'm going to get my femur broken at a restaurant. Okay. I mean, I get the lesser of two evils, so. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, you'll, you'll see. Choking on popcorn is no fun. It's, it's, like a, it's like a different type of choking. It's not the same type of choking. As like, let's say you're eating pork chops, and it's like, it's not like that type of choking. It's like a microscopic bit of popcorn is tickling the back of your throat. It's not like you can't breathe or anything, but it's very unpleasant. If, if I broke my femur, I think I would punch myself until I made myself pass out, because the pain would be too tremendous. The pain might make you pass out. Apparently the pain of breaking your femur uh, just instantly make makes you pass, you pass out. out. Yeah. Like, I hope so. Oh man, that is seriously the one bone... Uh, I mean, minus my spine. That's the one bone I don't want to break. Yeah. Is my femur. I'll break some ribs. I'll break my, my fingers. I've broken my foot. I've never broken anything. Ooh, you're lucky, man. I haven't Bre- fractured anything. I got a hairline fracture in my arm once because I fell. And then... Uh, they call it a hairline fracture because looking at it, it just looks like a piece of hair yeah, is on your it's bone. It's just such a... Th- it's not like a... It just cracked. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to wait for it to heal. You don't need like a sling or anything. So but the bone just... It's just like... Yeah. Just nice. a little little thin crack. But um, I broke my foot in high school because I was being a I was being a goofball. Uh oh. And uh, I wasn't wearing any shoes at school, and it was like lunchtime. Oh, you have to I, wear shoes at school though. Well, I had flip flops and I'd taken them off. Got it. And uh, my friend was like a little bit away, and I, my backpack was on the ground. So I'm like, I'm gonna run and I'm gonna leap off my backpack, like use it as a springboard. So I did, but there was a textbook in my backpack, like at this angle, Ryan. You see, and my foot went like that on it which made the backpack flip over. And then I flew through the air and I slammed the side of my foot down on the concrete and just shattered it. And the shatter went through my foot and like through like three of my toes. And it, uh, it hurt very fucking bad. <laughs> oh my God, I can imagine. And I what got, is the pain like of breaking something? Well, at first you don't really feel it. I was like... Like at first does it just feel like if I were to stub my toe or do something really... Like if, if I were to break my toe and I stubbed my toe, is, is breaking that toe kind of just... The next step up from yeah. stubbing. In fact, almost. ironically, I broke my toe the day before, but I didn't find out because 
uh, then I didn't find out until the day I broke my foot, which was the day after because I got an x-ray. I broke my toe because a kid, I was wearing flip-flops, and a kid opened the door and it twisted my toe back. Jesus Christ. With a lot of blood. Thanks, Alston. That was, that was the kid's name. Anyway. Fucking um, Alston. Fucking Alston, dude. I, uh. Alston Powers. <laughs> um, but, like, I got up, and, like, it was, like, a really dull pain. It just felt wrong, and I started walking. And then I realized, like, oh, shit. The bones don't feel like they're in the right place anymore. Oh, that sounds like an... It was awful. I don't like that feeling. The bones were like all like... It's like it's like nails on a chalkboard 24-7. That's how it felt. I was like... <laughs> oh my god. I walked and I was like, things have been moved around in a way that they shouldn't have been. And then all of a sudden the pain started like ringing louder in my foot. That's the only way I can describe it. It was like a ringing pain. And then I was like, ow, 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 ow. And it just started getting worse and worse and it wouldn't stop. And I was like, holy shit. I definitely just broke my foot. Yeah. And then uh, my friends had to help carry me to the bus. And then I got on the bus. And then uh, then the pain really started. And I started started crying like a little bitch on the school bus. But I didn't want anyone Were to see. Were you crying like a little bitch? I was crying. And Ooh, I had an ice pack from that's the nurse. That's a little bitch crying. I was a little bitch. Um, I, I who, mean, who cries over a broken bone, am I right? A bitch. <laughs> um, I'm sitting there with my ice pack, which had melted by now. And I have tears in my eyes. And then I spilled my ice pack on my crotch. So it looked like I had pissed myself from the pain. And then my dad had to come help me get off the bus. Uh, and he took me straight to the, the doctor. And then to form the cast after the x-ray, you have to stand on it. Mm-hmm. So I had to like stand on my broken foot for like 30 seconds to harden the cast. Yeah. I got to stay home from school the next day, so that was fun. Okay, Except that's it was cool. miserable because yeah. um, it's just such an awful pain. And that night, I was getting some Oreos. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crutch myself over to the fridge and get some Oreos and milk. And I had a glass of milk and some Oreos, and my crutches fell, and I slipped and just came down on my freshly broken foot yeah but you're just looking back you're just a clumsy person in general i can be i can be a little so like i can see how all these things happen it happens dude clumsy clumsy like there's accidents and then there are like people who are prone to accidents happening but the weird part is most of these things were out of your control yeah just the crutch just like slipped and i just know like in the apartment (laughs) i'll be like i'll be sitting in bed and randomly i'll hear this (laughs) <laughs> like we're like this just I'll hear something like this Fernando <laughs> Fernando no it's cause he knocks shit over it's cause, but Banana's a little shit that for some reason gets such joy out of knocking things over in fact what did he knock over in your room this week Ryan oh this could have been very painful for me you got lucky man I was I was I was enjoying a glass of wine one night alone in my room and I left the wine glass on top of my dresser my door was open and, you know, Banana likes to go into my room. He might want to chew on some cables, but he's never done that in my room, only your room. He hasn't actually done that in a very long time, Which thank is the Lord. Good job. Yeah. So he, he just likes to fuck around with things, as any, uh, any cat would. So he, he decided it would be a good idea to mess with the wine glass and uh, knock it over the dresser. So it shattered on the floor. We weren't home at the time. No. By the time we got home, it was nighttime. All the lights are off in our apartment. So, you, you know, can't see the floor, see anything. I go into my room, and to turn on the lights in my room, I have to walk across my room. Yeah. Because they're right next to my TV. And uh, I step on something, and it hurt a good bit. It started just stinging, and I was like, well, that doesn't feel nice. And so I turned on my um, flashlight, and I noticed there's, a, there's about, a f- I'd say, half of the cup. Yeah. The bowl is still in place, but jagged. And like just ready for me to fully step onto you, it. You almost my stepped foot. on like you would have had to go to the hospital. If yes, you stepped on that fully. That would have but shredded your foot up. Luckily, I only stepped on the tiny pieces. Yeah, and also, I'm confused. Still like, cut up my feet though. I'm genuinely curious as I like, I like I've dropped glasses. I've seen glasses break. Yeah, I don't know how this glass fell with such a velocity that it went like eight feet in every direction. Well, because like it's 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 compact, and when something separates, there's a release of. There's an extraordinary extraordinary amount of energy that's released when something breaks like that. Yeah, but I've so dropped those, glasses, sh- and that didn't it didn't go that far. Like like this was seriously the glass was like eight feet. This in was every also direction. not heavy glass. This was like light glass. Yeah, it dude, it was everywhere. Yeah, tell I, me I about came it. In your room, I was sweeping it up, and I was like, Jesus I would, Christ, dude. I was in bed, and randomly, I I just felt like a tsk, I was like ah on my knee, and I look, and I'm like, ah, a piece of glass was in my sheets, um, and then. Another time, I was walking through my room, and this is after I thought everything was cleaned up. And all of a sudden, tsk, I'm like, fuck! 
I, so I had to get tweezers and pull a little oh. shard of glass out from my toe. That's the thing about glass, man. It's see-through. So it's like, and it's so tiny. If it's everywhere, it's like, fuck, well, I'm going to be stepping on glass for a while. I hate the f I hate the type of pain being cut is, that slicing. Ugh, it's awful. Yeah. So, I mean, those of you have probably had a lot of painful experiences. So besides us not playing a game correctly, put in the comments <laughs> down below what your most painful experience in your lifetime has been. What is your most painful experience? Fuck. Since I haven't broken anything. My if you break something, that'll be it probably. But Probably my most pain... Okay, one of two things. One time I had a panic attack and my chest closed up and it felt like I was having a heart attack. It oh sucked. god. I've like, heard panic attacks are like, like absolutely terrifying I, and awful. I couldn't breathe and I was trying... Like I was making this noise like I was like... Because <gasps> I was trying to get air in but like it felt like I couldn't get it in. Does and it feel like I, you're I just, dying? It felt like someone was sitting on my chest. If... As well as there was a burning sensation in my chest, and I couldn't breathe, and I was weak and lightheaded. Oh my god, that's terrifying. It's happened to me twice, but it hasn't happened since high school, so... Good. Yay for me. I went to the cardiologist, and they were like, sorry, we, d we can't tell what's wrong with you until, uh, unless you're having one of these attacks, and we can monitor it live on the spot. I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. And they bring in like scary clown pictures. They said arrhythmia might have been. They said that's maybe one of the things, but I doubt it. Maybe. But you would I think hope a, not. you'd think a cardiologist would be like, yeah, it's maybe arrhythmia. He like, was just a like big deal. Arrhythmia, but could uh. be. As I said, it hasn't happened in a long time. Could have been so. minor cardiac arrest. Who knows so these things? So it was either that or one time when I was a, a small little boy, my cousin had a trampoline in his backyard. Oh, God. And I love this trampoline. It's one we of my most painful stories, too, is a trampoline story. And so you know that move you do? I got to stand up to kind of, because I got to explain it to Matt. And maybe Matt can help me explain it into words for you guys. All right, I'll translate it. So you know that move where you like go, like you jump down on your knees like this yeah you trample yeah you so jump you can jump back up and do a front flip back onto your feet yep exactly i was going for that but i launched myself off from the far left side of the trampoline which means i didn't go up it means i went forward uh -oh. but my knees were already in place to go down oh shit so i i landed perfectly my knees on the metal bar oh. at the end of the trampoline, and then I fell off of the trampoline after <laughs> that. And I'm just like, ah! You know when you're a kid and you just belt out and you just pain? gotta scream, man. My aunt came, like Connor just went running into the house, just like, <gasps> and then my aunt came, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm just like, ah, oh, my legs! I can't feel my legs! <laughs> It would have been even better if I looked down and it looked like a grenade blew off my legs. <laughs> like my legs just exploded from the knee down. Like the like the oh! impact just blasted the bottom half of your legs off. Like, like clean off. Like a in tropic thunder. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's an image I'd love to see. Like like a like a freeze frame of you coming down and hitting your knees on the metal bar and the bottom half of your legs blowing off at like <laughs> extraordinary speed just <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, and like, <laughs> you hear the sounds of gunfire. What's wrong? See, I want that to be the thumbnail image, but I don't think they're going to make that ad uh, friendly because they're like, there's blood in that. They I know. Do it. But I think those two were definitely the most painful. Oh, there's one more. There's a third one that was pretty painful. Was I was that? going to, I was going down a really steep hill on a bike and I put on the front brakes and you can <gasps> guess what happened from there. Flipped over the handlebars. Flipped forward and completely tore the skin off my right, like oh, shit. A part of my right arm. You can still see the. Hey, see that scar right I there. I got one too on my elbow. See, I just remember looking at it. It was just red, and, like in light pink meat, and I was like, "Ew, gross!" Because you know, like the skin's gone at that yeah. point. Gotta wait for that shit to grow back. Oh god, I, I hated, remember. I hated the look of it. Yeah, I I fell off a trampoline once. I I flew too far and uh, I made contact with the ground with my jaw. Oh my! Just god. Boom, on the side of my jaw. I never want to like the th the thought of breaking my jaw and feeling the bones not Ugh, sit yeah, right dude. and like, gotta, like scraping against each other. Oh my god! Oh man, people who have had their jaw broken and wired shut, let us know how that was in the comments because that sounds truly awful. I'm not gonna read these. I I I, I will, but it's gonna be hard to read these comments because every now and then I'm like, oh fuck! This one time, like I don't. I almost don't even want people to put their most painful story in the comments because they yeah. read that and be like, Ugh. but you know what, go ahead. Let's see, what's your most, what's your most painful story? Remember the most, like, the most cringe I've ever done from seeing pain 
was some was a really simple thing. It was from oh Jackass. It's oh, it's that, the paper cuts thing, isn't it's, it? It's it's when they took the yep, cardboard the, uh, uh, boxes. Yeah. I'm covering my ears. And they yeah. and they slid them through the webbings of their fingers yep. and feet. Yep. To cut that, it's like that wasn't even a stunt. That was just that was just sadistic. Yeah. Dude. That was like oh my that was just god. Weird. It's like why? Why oh, I'm thinking I can't. I hate that so fucking much. Like my my toes and my fingers oh. are like. Clenching together. I'm cringing hard right now. All right, we should, let's stop talking about pain because Let, people are probably like, I, I don't want to listen to this anymore. <laughs> let's, let's move on to something else. Matt, okay. what are we moving on to? I'll tell a story. Uh, I got a story um, from when I was in probably seventh grade. Mind if I move for this story? Sure. Okay. Ryan's moving to Wisconsin, guys. We're going to be doing super mega over Skype from now on. See you guys. All right, so when I was in about... Um, Sorry, I'll start now. When I was in about seventh grade, almost. Oh, hold there we on. Go. There we go. All right. When I was in about seventh grade, I went on this church retreat with yeah. some friends, like just a whole bunch of people. And there was this kid there who I didn't really get along with that well, but like we weren't enemies or anything. It was just. <laughs> Are you about to, uh, like, yeah, so uh, I killed him and nobody knows about that. So I, I thought I'd just bring it up on the pod. <laughs> Finally, just, you know, it's been, it's been long enough. You can't be charged for a crime that happened more than three years ago. Um, yeah, you can. Cold case. What? Cold like, case. You have to cut this out now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, we're, uh, th- there was a girl that I liked at the time, um, and she was on the retreat as well. What was her name? I'm not, I can't, I can't name names in this one. No, but like, uh... I'll, I'll make a fake name. I'll say, uh, let's say her name was Brittany, okay? Yeah. So, I really liked this Brittany girl, and I really wanted to impress her. I wanted to make a good impression on her. Okay. She, she went to my school, and, uh, I was like, wow, this is the first time, you know, we're hanging out outside of school. Uh, maybe she could see that I'm like a cool dude. Uh, so, you know, we're all kind of hanging out. And then there's this other guy. I'll give him the name of Roger. Okay. Roger. Roger. So Roger is kind of, you know. Is Roger interested in Brittany too? No. Okay. Um, But we are in this auditorium and uh, there's a guy speaking on stage and I'm kind of up near the front. We're all sitting on the floor and um. It's 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 a pretty big auditorium, a couple hundred kids my age in it. Uh, you know, Brittany's in there, and I'm sitting right near right near Roger, like two or three people away from Roger. Just in the middle of the guy speaking, you know, Roger uh, accidentally uh, let a little something out, and it started, and he just stopped for a second, and then just kept going. I'm not farting. Yes. Okay. That's he what ju- you, just. Okay. And it went on for a good like three or four seconds. And then the guy on stage like stopped speaking because they like caught him so off guard. And Roger looks at me and just goes, oh, Matt. No, come on. In front of the entire auditorium. He goes, oh, Matt, that's disgusting. Did he pull it off? How can I defend myself in that moment? Because then it would like, no, it was him. He did Yeah, it. exactly. And I just remember in that moment, I felt so Were much you friends with Roger. I, I said we were like acquaintances. Oh, so he did, he did it as in a as in a dick as a dick move. He did it because he was so embarrassed. He didn't know what to do, so he just looked at me. It wasn't and said like that. haha, I'm gonna embarrass. No, Matt. it wasn't it was... like it. It was like he literally just threw it on someone else, little worm. And he does that, and the girl I liked was nearby, and I'm just thinking like, oh my fucking that god, I can't believe this just worm. happened. And I'm just sitting there like my heart's racing. I'm like, did that really just happen? Did he just pin that on me in front of everyone that I'm spending the whole weekend with at this place? So afterwards, I go up to him and I was like, what the heck was that about? Why? And I was so mad. He's like, what, dude? Well, when I started, I was like, I already let some out. I figured I wasn't going to stop. And I was just like, dude, I was so fucking pissed. We're like, why'd you blame it on me? And he's like, what? I'm sorry, dude. And like, I was like, dude, I was furious. And like. Telling it now, like, I still feel a little angry about that. That was so embarrassing. Because it's such a shit move. It is. It's just like... (sighs) Oh I don't know. God. You know, you know me. I every time there's a bad smell, every every time you gotta own up to it. I own. I always own up to it's my. The farts. adult responsible thing to do. Has there ever been a time where I farted and I went, it "Wasn't me"? No, honestly, I can't say it. Because even in a group, I even will in a say, group. "Sorry, that was me." Because you guys might want. I'll try to warn you in advance. Yeah. Exactly. That's very kind of you. And I appreciate that. Sometimes I give you a little sly smile. Sometimes I'll be like, I know what that means. (laughs) But like, I I, I don't, you know what, dude? I I don't know. Like like a little 
kid, uh, like how you tell that they pooped the, themselves. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> they got that face. You're like, I know what that means. Yeah. Dude, but like for for fuck's sake, Roger, wherever you are, I hope that I hope you got a sweet piece of karma for that one. I hope the same thing happened to you while you were on a date. No, I hope like someone got killed. And then someone was like, oh, it was Roger. <laughs> <laughs> the universe, like, balancing out with yeah. that. With, like, that horrific event. Yeah. And uh, with that Britney girl, uh, I found out later that she liked my best friend. So that's how that's... And no, she probably would have liked me if she hadn't thought I was a disgusting pig. That's fine. I had a girlfriend in a youth group who eventually ended up dating one of my friends from youth group. <laughs> I worked with that friend, didn't I? You did work with that friend. He was my coworker. Yeah, he was. Incidentally. Yeah, are they back together? Because I, I don't know. Because I know they separated because she wanted times with other guys. That's such a that's such a weird. That was her legitimate thing excuse to talk though. about on the podcast. That was her legitimate excuse. <laughs> yeah, but like I can't. You can't blame that. She's she like yeah. people are in their early twenties. Yeah, this is the time where you learn things, and I think people make mistakes in terms of relationships the most. Also, he, but if you're still making those same mistakes by the time you're forty. Yeah. Then you might have a problem. Even in your 30s, maybe you should, yeah. should cool it I down. I think by 20s is definitely the time where you you don't purposely, you shouldn't purposely make mistakes. But it's when mistakes happen, and that's how you grow and learn and become. The, your 20s, I feel like you're like that period of time right before you're like a true adult. Mm-hmm. And it's like this is the last part of your life where you're going to make big mistakes and learn from them. And mm-hmm. you're going to like try shit and do shit. And then you're going to learn from that. And then that's what makes you a better adult. Yeah. You know? 20s are f- made for mistakes, but that does not mean per- be like, oh, well, 20s are for mistakes. I'm going to go out and oh, make some Oh, 20 years mistakes. old. YOLO. God, YOLO glad, was the high school thing, I'm wasn't glad it? YOLO died. Like, who says YOLO these days? I mean, it even had uh, the Lonely Island even made a uh, song. They made a YOLO song. Yeah, yeah I remember that. I, actually, I remember when they did that, I was like, oh, I, even at that time, I was just kind of like, really? Usually they're a bit ahead of the curve and not trying to go with it. Wasn't that with Adam Levine? Yep. Yeah, that's right. I remember that song. Oh man, like uh Did it like, also have Akon in it? Akon was in I'm um, uh, I just had sex. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just had, had that sex. was high school too. I remember that. And, and it I felt so good, felt so good. That was never my favorite song by them. Yeah. That was that was actually on the lower end of the songs of theirs I liked the most. I liked I think Saxman is my favorite Lonely Island song, and none of them singing it except Jack Black. Really? Have you heard it? It's Jack Black singing with like He's basically like at a club and he's hyping up this sax man and then the sax man will just be like Oh yeah 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 and he's like what the fuck are you doing? I think that like it's okay. so funny. That's like that is Lonely Island's best song even though none of them are in it except Jack Black. Kind of like how I think Nathan Fielder's best video is him with Scoo Dad. Oh Scoo, yeah. Dad. Uh the the like little um scat video he made when he was in college like 10 years ago. <laughs> it's that like, and then Scoo, the, bop, dop, dop, bop. the watermelon video. Thin watermelon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like 10 seconds and uh I don't want to spoil it. Go look yeah. up thin watermelon. It's a really <laughs> funny video. Dude, and then he did he did that music video where he took like a he took a Grey's Anatomy music video that someone had made and then just like that was good made, and then filmed shots of himself and put them in the music it was like video him and his friend like, but they looked really good. <laughs> that was a really God. He's so genius, man. That's remember why that, he's my favorite comedian. Do you remember that time where like medical dramas or any type of drama would use How to Save a Life? Yeah, like Scrubs used that's it. what that's what the music video is. It's yeah. that song phrase How to Save a Life. Do you remember? Um, How to say, I used to love that song. I used to get sad. I'd be like, yeah. Oh, same. My, my mom used to did play I it. go wrong? Except I used to listen to the con, uh, the the um, song in the context of my non-religious friends when I was a religious. <laughs> I do. I remember. Where doing did that I kind of go stuff. wrong? I lost a friend somewhere Dude. along, and the when the bitterness ends. But guys, something. that's a good lesson. That just because <clears> someone doesn't have uh, same religious values or political values, you can still be friends with them. It doesn't matter. Friendship is about the human connection you have, not about your religious views. But if those religious values, for instance, like. If you went back far enough to the Greeks and they started, you know, they were like, we're going to sacrifice people to Zeus. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you should stay away from that person. So you stay away from people like that. Yeah. Are there still people that believe in like Zeus and shit? There's one person on this planet that believes in the Greek mythology. I'm sure there's... At least. I'm, I'm sure there's actually probably there's a sizable be a amount group. of people. There's a group of people that believe the earth is flat. Oh, but there's a group of people that believe anything. There's a There's a group of people that believe... The Earth is a fucking plate. It's like a disc. And then, yeah, it's a disc. Sorry. And the sun rotates in a circle over it or some shit. Do you want to know their explanation of gravity? It's that the disc is constantly moving upwards, so it's pushing us down. 
But that doesn't explain gravity, because that means that we're being pulled down by something below us still, right? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It, it's... I, sorry, I don't want to step on any flat earther's toes, you know? Yeah, so, sorry about that. <laughs> Just on. look it up. God. How can you believe the earth is flat in 2017? I am sorry, I don't want to get... Is that even getting political? No. That's just common sense. If you make flat earthing a bipartisan issue. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is an issue that, uh, it's really a bipartisan issue. Like, I'm not a smart person, but I know what love is. And I, def <laughs> and I definitely know that the earth isn't flat. Oh, man. <laughs> I may not be a smart man. But I know what love is. And then he, then he, what is, doesn't he run out the door or something? Yeah. He's like, I'm going to run and find the end of the earth. <laughs> and he runs all the way to the edge of the earth. No, it was to prove Jenny at, was, was at the top of the steps. Yeah. No, no, he was at the top of the steps and Jenny was leaving out the door. No, I, I, no, no, I, no. I, I can't he's remember at, the placement. Jenny goes upstairs and he goes, Will you marry me? And oh, she goes, she's, she's like, Oh, yeah. I don't think you know what love is for us. And he goes, I may not be a smart man. But, but I, I know, know what love, love is. is. And then he runs out the out screen the door. door, right? Fuck, man, that's a... That's a that, I just got goosebumps thinking about that scene. The hardest scene for me to stomach in that movie the, for the first time watching was when he was meeting a little Forrest for the first time. Yeah. Oh, and and could, he's like self-aware of his... When you realize that he's self-aware of his stupidity, like it's that. Man. Where it's like, because usually he's like, stupid is as stupid does. Like his mom is telling him, like, you're not, you know, you're, you're special, but you're not stupid. You're, you're a fine, you know, blah, 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 blah. But then you realize it's like, oh, he does know that people look look at him in this way, that he is not as good. But like, he keeps going. Dude, it's such a beautiful movie. Um, like, and, and you know, they they actually they had a sequel. Like the script and everything. 9 11, moon 9 -11. landing, all that, right? No, uh 9 11 was why they canceled the movie, apparently. Uh -huh. Or that's that's what I read, was that they had the script ready. He to was go. a part of 9 11, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was on the plane. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like it's based on the books, and like both books came out before the first movie. And I actually I have both books. I have the second one, and I, I kind of skimmed through it. And he uh, he's part like I think he's responsible for crashing the Exxon Valdez, which was like a massive oil spill. Creates the new uh, the new Coke formula. He shovels pig shit on a farm. He fights in Operation Desert Storm with a chimp named Sue, and uh, <laughs> I think he goes to the moon. The second one's a little more outlandish than the first one. The first uh, I have the first treatment, like the first script that was written for it before they like revised it and stuff. Oh, really? That's awesome. Th there's like there's a bunch of shit after what they show. I can't remember what it was. I'll have to. It's still in. It's still at uh, my dad's place, so I should bring it by so you could read some. That'd be of it, awesome. Because it's super different. It's like in a lot of places. It, it, it's like eight hours of him literally sitting waiting for the bus to come back. Just solid him sitting there waiting for the bus. Exactly. When my mom said that the first time she saw that movie in theaters, my grandma, my grandma was like, you, you know, you know, he's going to sit there the whole day and wait for that bus, which is where the second movie picks up. Really? Apparently. Yeah. Like, or that's where the book picks up is he's like sitting, <clears throat> waiting for his, his son, son to come back. Haley Joel Osment. They should still make the sequel and keep Tom Hanks and have Haley Joel, like the bus pulls up. Was that then, Haley Joel Osment as the son? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. Was yes, it, it was. It's Haley Joel Osment. And then look this the, up. I can't remember. It's Haley. I, wanna, I swear to God, it's Haley Joel Osment. It. Okay. But just imagine the, the, the sequel starts and the bus pulls up and grown Haley Joel Osment gets off. <laughs> hey, Dad. He's, I, he's such a cutie now, Haley Joel Osment. He's a big boy. It's big boy season. That makes him cute, right? I guess so. I liked his Eric Andre interview. He doesn't say like a single word in that whole interview. He's just looking around confused. Just being like, what? It's time to play Force 2 Orgasm. Forrest Jr. Forrest Jr., yeah. Haley Joel Osment. And then he was in The Sixth Sense, and then he was in Secondhand Lines. Remember that movie? Where You don't remember him from Mixed Nuts as the little boy? Was that a movie? Mixed Nuts? With, with uh, Steve Martin. <laughs> no, I don't remember that movie. <laughs> you don't remember him from uh, Bogus? Bogus? Man, I just want to get a collection of like every 90s and early 2000s movie that no one's heard of. And be like, man, this one, well, let's watch this one tonight and see why no one remembers it. He played. He was Chip's voice in Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christ. Wait, what? Yeah. No, sorry. IMDb cut it off. The Enchanted Christmas. <laughs> the Enchanted Christ. They go through like an Beauty and the Beast, portal. The Enchanted Christ. And they go meet Christ, and he's like dressed up as like a princess and everything. Matt, do you want to make like an Enchanted esque movie? Where it's, it goes back to like Jerusalem, Jesus is having a fun time. Is it like a musical? No. And all of a sudden, like, he's in the middle of the desert, and all of a sudden, this portal opens up. He's like, What? Then he accidentally trips through it, and he ends up. He goes up, to New York City. Go, yeah, yeah, he ends up like in New York, City. New York City. Modern day yes. New York City. 
I love that idea. And it's him just trying to like get accustomed and shit. Yeah. And the, tra- and the trailer He's like, has like huh? fun music. Yeah. It's him like trying to eat pizza and he bites like the crust first. There's this scene where it's like panning along the side of a wall. It's like people shining shoes. And then there's this one person shining his bare feet. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and like, and he runs into a guy and he sees Jesus in his robes. He's like, man, we got to change your look. And then like, it's like, <laughs> it like they, it's like they go into the dressing room and it's like no. a music montage. Matt, he has to be transformed there on Halloween night. No, like, uh, no, on Halloween day. So during the daytime, you'd have all those goofy stuff. And then when he's walking around during the nighttime and his Jesus get up, people think it's a costume. And then there's a bunch of, like, comedic misunderstandings. And he, and he, and he ge- develops these friends at a party that slowly begin to realize, this is the Christ. This is the real deal. We need to help get him back to Jerusalem so he can die for our sins. This summer. That's my favorite plot des- device ever. When falling, go- through, <laughs> falling through a portal and ending up in modern day real life New York City. (laughs) That's happened in like more than one movie and you would think that that would be like okay this can only happen once. But that's happened in multiple movies. Uh, Was it there? What happened in the Rocky and Bowinkle movie? Do you remember uh, that where they were like just poorly 3D rendered like characters? Oh my god! In real yeah. life, yeah. I, I I love there there was that whole like thing period where it was like, all right, we need to make a movie about this cartoon. I loved it. The Looney Tunes movie. The best way to do it is Steve to bring Martin them was into in the Looney life. Tunes movie. Yeah, and then he was uh, the villain. Space Jam, right? Uh, the the one after that. They did two real life ones. The Lo- of Looney Tunes movies? I had no idea. They had they had Looney Tunes, uh, Space Jam. Well, they sorry they had Space Jam, then they had Looney Tunes back in action. Oh my I god! Had um, what's his name? He was in the Mummy. Brendan Fraser. Did they do wait? And Steve Martin and a bunch of other celebrity cameos. Was there a real life Roger Rabbit movie too? What was there a real life Roger Rabbit movie? Roger Rabbit was a yeah. What are you talking about? That's that's a classic, isn't it? Where it's like cartoon in real life. Yeah, and then there's like it's like there's this really hot redheaded chick. Yeah, dude. Cartoon chick. Yeah. Yeah, Roger Rabbit. Was that okay. a show or something beforehand? Yeah. Was it? Is it? It's a famous cartoon. Roger. Was Rabbit. it an adult cartoon? I think I, I don't know because it was very adult themed movie kind of. Dude, who framed Roger Rabbit? Am I right? Uh, you're right. If oh, we, they did it with SpongeBob too in the SpongeBob movie. That is such a weird trope. It's like he comes to the cartoons real to real life. But in SpongeBob, it's like. It's like a self-aware humor thing that they do yeah. when they go and they did a good the, job with that one. Yeah, uh, I really. The SpongeBob movie is it's good, seriously good, it's fucking good. I love it, man. I need to watch it again. They should make a Family Guy real life movie. I used to always just get jazzed whenever, like a Hey Arnold movie or SpongeBob movie or any movie that was on that was a show on TV came out because the shading looked beautiful. Yes, like I was like, it looks so pretty. Like the I remember, dude. I loved the Beavis and Butthead movie. It didn't look that much different from do the show. Do America, Beavis and Butthead, Do America. <laughs> yeah, it's a good fucking movie. How come they never made a Hank Hill movie? I don't. I don't know, man. We met the guy that did the uh, the the uh, like the acid trip scene in the Beavis and Butthead movie. Yeah, he was in the game room's office one day. I didn't know that was him until after he left, and I was like, wait, he animated that scene. Holy shit, that's a crazy scene, and it's terrifying. You're terrifying. I'm not terrifying, Ryan. What makes me terrifying? Is it look like a skeleton? No. Yeah. What? I said no. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Ryan? What? You want to take this outside and I'll kick your ass? Yeah, let's do it. Well, okay, I, we're... I, I was... I don't... I don't... Okay, we're back. Matt kicked my ass, folks. Believe it or not, I, I didn't think I was going to win. I actually, I, have to f- I got a few good ones in there. I have to finish this podcast on a stretcher. It's okay. He's, he's, he's lying down. He's got one of those neck braces on. Yeah. I have to say, though, um, you uh, taking a butcher's knife and slitting in, into my shins didn't help the fact. Cutting my Achilles heel I thought was a bitch move. And uh, mm. uh, punching me multiple times in the back of my temp- in the back of my head in my temples also uh, kind of uh, wore me out a bit. Well, I wasn't expecting it because we were going in for a handshake, and then you just kind of pulled all that out on me. I was surprised you fell for the handshake because we were going to fight. So when I was like, "I'll see if he falls for the handshake," and you well, fell like you for do it. that before boxing, like you do the ding ding, you know, doo, doo, hey, doo. all's fair in love and war. That's all I gotta say about that one. I can't. I can't argue with you there, my friend. Uh, but I'm sorry if the medical bills are a bit high. It's I, okay. I, uh, I, odds I are you pay it. my medical bills. Fuck. Okay. Ten. Okay. One, two, three, six. Four. Fuck. All right. You gotta pay your own. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Uh. Okay. 
Odds are you ask the doctor to triple your medical bills. Fuck. I'll go three. Okay. Three, two, one, three. Two. Oh, oh you have to okay, do it. okay, okay, okay. Right, you got lucky, man. You okay. got really lucky. Okay, odds are uh, you have to leave the room and I have to finish the rest of the podcast by myself. <laughs> Ten. One, two, three, seven. seven. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. You got a good 10, 12 minutes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyways, so, we're gonna go see the disaster artist later today. Um, so episode 70 was already out, so that's pretty cool. A game that I started playing, by the way, was, uh, Modern Warfare 2. I started playing some Modern Warfare 2, uh, getting back into it. Uh, the multiplayer is, like, super fun. I'm enjoying it. And I, and I noticed in the comments that a lot of you were saying, I was in a Mario Odyssey episode. I was I was saying my favorite Call of Duty game, but a lot of you took it as I can't believe Ryan just said his favorite game of all time was Modern Warfare 2. No, that's not what I said. That's not what I meant. I meant my favorite Call of Duty game was Modern Warfare 2. It's like a tie between that and the first one. But whatever. It's fun. There's still like 700 people that still play. If you still play, that would be cool. Um, other than that, I haven't seen any movies, like, worth mentioning. I did watch Mindhunters, which was, it's not, it's not like a Breaking Bad type thing. It, I, what I mean by that is, it's not great. It's not like a classic TV show, but it's also not like, uh, later season American Horror Story bad. Now, I've never seen an episode of American Horror Stories. I've, I've like, seen, like, bits and pieces, and I've never liked any of them. Uh, but... So the show I say was is like in the middle. It's just a show to watch in the in the middle time of when you are uh, paying attention to a really good show. Like this was just a good show to watch, just kind of pass the time to wait for, I guess, um, Game of Thrones and Better Call Saul. I hope they make a second season. I'm al I'm also kind of upset that uh, the Get Down on Netflix isn't it isn't renewed for a second season. I thought it did very well, and I. And I have to say, I, I really did like The Get Down. Um, if you don't know what that is, that's a show on Netflix. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. I liked the style. It was, like, cheesy in all the right ways. Um, I, there were some episodes, of course, where I'm like, okay, they're just dragging it out a little bit. But overall, I thought it was a fun show. It's uh, So go check it out. Unfortunately, there won't be a season two. But whatever. Um, I'm feeling a lot of... Uh, just like gastral like okay if you guys can help me out i've been feeling like a lot of gas i guess in my like when i wake up i feel a little bloated and i'm and i'm still counting my calories i'm not eating a shit ton i, st I feel i started to feel a little bloated i raised my calorie and take up 200 calories um still feel as i said a little bloated and i feel like there's a lot of gas i don't know if that's a problem if there's a gas leak in my body if anyone knows any any medical term that uh, could Tie that in, tie that into, uh, that would be a great help if any of you could act as my doctor, because I certainly trust a group of 12 year olds, as well as a group of, you know, people that are my age or older, um, that haven't gone to medical school. So I put all of my trust in you medically, and I hope that you help me solve this problem, and I hope that it's not some horrible disease of any kind. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think if there's, uh, anything else that I wanted to bring up. Oh yeah, the Infinity War uh, trailer just came out. I'm usually not a fan of... I, I mean, I always see superhero movies. Like, I saw Justice League, I saw Wonder Woman, I saw... I saw Age of Ultron, Civil War, Ant-Man. Like, I've seen all those movies just because I've, I... Me and my dad used to watch a bunch of superhero movies and action movies. So I've just kind of... I like them in that way of that it's like, he's gonna see them and then I'll just, like, talk with him and see how he liked them type of thing. But I usually don't like the movies that much. Um, but Marvel seems to be at least entertaining, like I can sit through it and not, no, that's a lie. There's certain Marvel movies where, uh, I've just been a little...